Back with Bobby and JJ Radio, we have the great Navarro Williams. Uh, from He's the CEO and president of Sam Ministries, talking everything about this incredible organization here in the San Antonio metro area. Um, Navarro, uh, let's talk about your homeless prevention program. So I, I'm assuming that people attack this kind of problem from after the fact. But, right. But you have a new perspective with this ministry with before it, trying to prevent it. Yeah, so, so in, in 2008, we were sort of doing a mission vision review and our mission is to help the homeless and those at risk of becoming homeless attain self-sufficiency and we were doing a lot of stuff to help those who were homeless but was, we, we really looked around and we had we weren't doing anything to help those at risk of becoming homeless so sure. didn't quite know what to do but i tasked our, our program person at the time to go find find out what people were doing about it he came back with the best practice and then was called homeless prevention where you would pay the rent or the utilities if a person a family was getting evicted or if their utilities were about to be disconnected right. you would pay that you'd look at their situation to make sure going forward uh that they could handle it so we thought that that was a good program we went out and we raised some money uh actually about six hundred thousand wow. dollars for to do the program over several years and something amazing happened, uh, you know, that if you think of 2008, 2009, that's when the economy was really tanking. Mm -hmm. And the federal government could see that a lot of people were going to be in trouble because a lot of people are marginalized. Twenty eight percent of the population of San Antonio is below the poverty line here. Sure. So we were going to have a lot of people that were going to just become homeless. Did you say 28 percent? 28 percent. Wow. So. Um, we then so more money became available. The federal government across the country did a billion dollars. That's with a B mm -hmm. in homeless prevention over like two and a half, three years. So we started applying for the money. And because we had already started our program, there was nothing like that in San Antonio. We right. started our program. We were able to turn that 600,000 into two and a half million wow. for the community. And at that time, we took care of about 6,000 uh, families over that two and a half period year period of time. Well, since then, all that money's gone away, but Sam Ministries has continued its program. We fundraise for it privately. And since 2008, we've kept 14,000 uh, children in their home and 22,000 people totally. entirely. And is it true that you came up with this program? I, I know you don't want to say. <laughs> I, well, actually, uh, uh, I will say I inspired the program, but uh, you know, the guy that went out in, in, to Minnesota and, and found the program that's that's who brought it in. He still works here in San Antonio, by the way. Awesome. So, so through the program, <laughs> what are you actually using the money for? So what we do is uh, we sit down with the family and we see what the situation. Typically, you know, something's happened like you know the the car broke down and they took the rent money to fix the car or or something like that, or someone got sick and then they didn't really have insurance, but they had to pay the doctor. So it's usually a one-time event that creates that problem for right. them. So what we'll do is we'll look at the situation, we'll look at their budget, and then we'll say, okay, look, we can, we can help you. You know, $700 can, can help you stay in your home. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we analyze it. And so if, if the rent needs to be paid, because they have to have a disconnection notice, though. It can't be, I'm behind in my rent. Right. You have to have a disconnection notice. And the same thing with the utilities. I'm, I'm behind. You have to have a disconnection notice. And that way we know that they're really at a tragic point you know, sure. before things happen. Um, we also provide some supportive services like budgeting and case management. And then what we do when we started this program, and we still do it, is we pay the landlord directly or we pay SAWS or CPS Energy directly. Sure. That way that we know the payment has been made. Then, one last thing. Be. Yeah. We track, you know, I'm a, I'm a former business guy, so right. we started tracking these people back in 2008, and uh, we would track them for 18, up to 18 months. Mm. And we can find out uh, if they're homeless again because everyone in San Antonio that has dollars that come from the HUD, from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, has to put their information in the same database. It's called the Homeless Management Information System, HMIS. So if we can't find them by phone, then we can go in the database and see if they accessed homeless services again. And since we started that in 2008, and you know it rolls every 18 month for people, sure. uh, about 97% of the people that we help that way do not go to homelessness again. They don't become homeless again. So it was just that one event in their life. Right, that right. That, you're pretty yeah. much interviewing them to make like it's usually a one-time thing that yes. happened like somebody got sick or the yes. car broke down but what what happens if it's somebody lost their job and 
we don't know when they're going to come back well, on their feet. Well, then now we have a different program for them. Mm. And you came up with that one too? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Some of these were, were invented, actually invented by the federal government too. <laughs> that one's called rapid rehousing, and I, I think we're going to talk about that. Uh, but this is more of a one time event, and I feel yes. that that really can happen to you know, people that are under un, underemployed, not necessarily exactly. unemployed, but exactly. underemployed. You know, carburetor goes out. Right. That's detrimental. It is. Carburetor. I've been fueling injection since the 90s. Come on. <laughs> or whatever. Well, now, now a lot of these people have old cars. Yeah, that's, trust that was, me. That was my point. Yeah, the, the but, old, you know, but the thing about it, too, is and if, they, if homeless people have an asset, that's it. Mm-hmm. It's a car. Right. Because that can generally get you around. Now, it's usually a car that's not in good shape. But it's it's really the only asset at that point in time that they have. And with the type of city that doesn't have public transit that they can actually get by. Yeah. Like that. So, I, you yeah. know, the the bus system, though, here's when they invented, when they uh, bought the transitional housing uh, program, they bought it close to a place that has bus routes. That makes sense. Yeah. We need to take some talks more about SAM Ministries. Check them out at sam.org slash get help if you need some assistance or just if you want to be uh, participate in this program at all, just go to sam.org. SAMM.org.